G'day everyone, welcome back. It's been quite a few weeks since I've had a chance to do any real work on the bus, but I'm really excited today because this week I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to get the new floor installed. Now, the original floor in the coasters is, um, is actually two different thicknesses of plywood because the area between the wheel arches actually has a, quite a few raised sections, which means that it sits a little bit higher than the rest of the floor frame. So in the original coaster floor, the majority of the floor is actually made just from 12 mil plywood. And then that section between the, the rear wheels is um, five mil, I believe, in the original coasters. And most people, when they replace the floor, just replace it with the same thickness. So that never really sat well with me because when you look at the thickness of a 12 mil sheet of ply, it's really not that thick at all. Um, and a lot of people argue, well, it's good enough for the original bus. You know, Toyota thought it was good enough for the original bus. It'll be good enough for my motorhome. Um, but when you think about the, per the original purpose of the coaster, it wasn't designed to be screwing cabinets and um, bolting fridges into the floor or people walking up and down, um, you know, in the middle of the floor all day. It was designed for people to just come in and out of the bus and sit down in the seats. And if you actually look at where the seats are bolted in the, in the coasters, the bolts all are not just bolted into the floor. They actually go into parts of the steel frame underneath or reinforce sections of the wall. So the actual floor of the, the original floor in the coasters was not actually supporting very much. Um, but anyway, a lot of people have done just the 12 mil and are happy with it. For me personally, I just wasn't comfortable with having, you know, the floor, which is going to be the foundation of my future house being so thin. So I had the, the dilemma of trying to find you know a, a floor that was going to be strong enough and that I was comfortable with um, without adding too much weight. So I agonized for quite a while about how I was going to do this. Um, in the end I've decided the main area of the floor I'm actually going to use 18 mil instead of 12 mil and in the area between the wheel arches I'm going to use 12 mil instead of 6 mil. So basically my floor is going to be about 6 mil thicker uh, than the original floor was. Now that is going to add more weight. There will be people that think it's overkill, um, that I'm making a mistake, adding too much weight in the bus when it's not really necessary. I hope that's not the case. I hope I don't come to regret it uh, down the track when I finish the build and see how much the bus weighs, but I don't think so. Um, you know, I think the floor is pretty important part of the build and I want to make sure I get a good solid foundation. So that's what I've decided to go with and we'll just see how we go with that. Got my worksite supervisor with me today. He's actually not quite that happy about being on site, but <laughs> say hello, Peppa. I've decided I'm going to reinstall the passenger seat that was here and because I want to be able to use the exact same mountings and the same bolts and everything that were originally in the seat, um, I'm actually going to be doing this piece in 12 mil, so it'll be the same thickness as the original floor just so that the bolts and everything will um, tap back nicely into that space. Um, on the other side of this step here I'm planning to build like the dog den <laughs> crate area um, and then I'm probably going to be building up this little bit of the floor here to the same height as this step and having a little bit of storage underneath so this whole section here when the build is done will actually be hidden underneath storage um, under the seat here and storage so it won't actually you won't be able to notice that this first bit of the floor will be six mil lower than the rest because it's actually all going to be built in. Um, so this little bit here will be 12 mil but the rest of it will be 18 mil. Um, and where I want to join the ply, the sheet supply, is actually on these beams here because they're a good 110 mil wide. Um, so it gives you a lot, a lot of nice space to join two pieces of ply and not have to put the screws right up to the edge and get splitting and so on. Joining them along this one here would actually be much better in terms of 
um, less wastage of the ply because I can actually get one whole sheet of ply, one length of ply to cover that whole section. So I'd actually only need two sheets of ply to do this and then maybe a third one up there. Whereas to do it this way, I actually had to buy four sheets of the ply which is a bit more expensive um, but I just I did it that way because I think if I tried to join it on here these are only about 45 mil wide um, and I think it's just not quite enough in my mind it would be better to you know I'd have to screw quite close to the edge of the ply which would probably be fine but I'd much rather do it over here where I've got a lot more uh, space to play with. Now, the problem with doing it on these is that you can see um, there are quite a few big holes in these um, particular beams. And, um, you know, if I'm going to be joining two bits of ply and the join's going to be in the middle here, then technically part of that join is going to be exposed underneath, um, which again would probably be fine if I butted it up close enough and ran some um, sealant in between. but. I, I would prefer to seal that so I'm actually going to use some little pieces of um, steel sheet that I've got left over from my big bus and just um, glue some little pieces over those holes. I'll show you what I mean. So I've just cut, a, you know, used a bunch of off cuts that I had left over from when I did the big bus. Um, this is not the piece that will go on this particular hole, but you get the idea. Um, so I'll be able to cover those up. Now this is less than a mil thick, um, this sheet. So, um, you know, once it's glued down, it's not going to make it much difference at all when I screw the ply down onto that. Um, but you can see now that join will be... Um, supported the whole way along. Okay, so I've covered all the holes where I'm going to want to join my pieces of ply. Um, I just stuck it down with Sika. No one's going to see this, it's going to be under the floor, so it's as rough as guts, but it doesn't matter. Um, all the holes are nicely covered, so now when the ply joins along here, um, there's not going to be any gaps. Again, some people will think this is overkill, but you know, it's just the way I want to do it. So I'm going to wait for the sicker to dry now um, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start measuring uh, the sections of ply that I need to cut. And you can see here I actually kept the original pieces of ply um, from the floor so I can use those as templates hopefully. Is my plan. Okay, so I've got all my template pieces in position. So these are the pieces of the original floor that I have left over that I kept specifically because they they had the curved pieces and funny sort of shapes so I can use them as templates. And I've tweaked them a little bit uh, because you can see the original floor, the way they they joined the pieces together was actually like with a, a, a kind of a, I don't know, it's not really tongue and groove, but um, a, a tongue and groove sort of thing that they'd done. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be butting them up against each other. So I've just combined a few pieces, tweaked them a little bit to fit in where I want the joints of my ply pieces to go. So now I'm going to trace these onto my new ply uh, and cut them out. Hopefully, fingers crossed without making <laughs> too many mistakes because uh, this stuff is expensive. And if I have to buy another sheet of that because I've uh, stuffed up a cut, it will not be very much fun. Okay, so I've got the first couple of pieces traced out. Now let's see how I go with the cutting.
first piece cut out. Uh, it's a little bit rough, but given that I'm not used to using a jigsaw, and I think I started with the trickiest piece, um, but I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the big question is, is it going to fit in the bus? I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it's not going to win any neatness awards, but um, it fits pretty well. Uh, the test will be when all the other pieces are in, of course. So now that I've got the first one down, it's time to cut out the rest. So now that I've got all my pieces cut out and I know that they actually fit well together on the floor, um, what I'm going to do now is actually paint the underneath and all the sides with bitumen paint. And the idea of this is um, because the plywood floor is going to be exposed um, underneath to any dust and dirt and water that comes up from the road, um, I'm going to paint it in order to seal it and try and protect it from the weather a little bit. Um, and this is the stuff I'm going to be using. This one is a different brand to the stuff that I used on the big bus, um, but I thought I'd give this one a go this time and see how it is. Um, so my plan is to paint, uh, just sort of prime the plywood first with a coat of this mixed with some water, and then I'll do another much thicker coat of this over the top, and hopefully that'll be enough. And then once that's dry, I'll be able to put all the sheets back into the bus and glue and screw them down into the frame. So you can see this stuff is just ridiculously thick, even after rigorous shaking and stirring, it's still like got the consistency of peanut butter. Um, and it's gonna be really hard to paint it like that. Um, I'm, it does say on the tub that you can use it to prime porous surfaces by diluting it with a little bit of water. So I've done that here. Um, so I've put, put some of the paint in with a little bit of water and given it a good stir so it's obviously a lot thinner now I'll be able to paint this on um, but what I might do is paint just a thin coat of this stuff onto the wood first just to help it sort of soak into the surface a little bit and hopefully get the subsequent coats to stick a bit better um, but I'd like to do the, the subsequent coats with the thick stuff that's not diluted so what I'm going to try and do is put this in a warm sunny spot for a little bit and hopefully that might help to soften it up a little bit and it might be a little bit easier to um, paint on. I have no idea <laughs> if this is the correct way to do it. Um, it's completely different stuff to the paint that I used to seal the ply in my big bus so I don't have any experience with this brand. Um, so yeah I'm just making this up as I go along and hopefully I don't completely stuff it up and have to buy it all expensive marine ply all over again. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. This is after just painting one coat of the um, diluted bitumen paint. Um, it's pretty crappy stuff to work with. Even diluted it was still pretty hard to paint and it looks a bit like a dog's breakfast. Um, but you know, I don't really care because you're not going to see it. And this is just the initial first thin coat just to help um, sort of seep into the wood a little bit. The next couple of coats I'll apply quite a bit thicker hopefully. 
but this is as much as I'm going to do today. I'll let that dry and I'll come back tomorrow and uh, try another coat. So this coat I'm painting much thicker. I've basically just added only enough water to get it to um, be the consistency that I can use the paintbrush, but it's pretty thick. And it's important when you're painting with the bitumen paint, if you want to get a water, good waterproof seal, to paint each coat at right angles to the first coat. So yesterday, the initial primer I painted in this direction. So the coat that I'm painting on today, I'm gonna to paint this way. And then tomorrow I'll probably do another coat or maybe even later this afternoon if it dries quick enough and I'll do another coat going this way. But this, you can see this coat's going on much, much thicker. Um, and it's not too bad to paint with. So um, this should help to give it a really good seal. If I get a couple of coats like this on it. Okay, so I've painted all my pieces. I ended up painting three coats all together. So I did that initial primer coat that was diluted sort of one-on-one -on -one with a bit of water. Um, and then after that, I painted on two thick coats. So you saw the second coat that I was painting on. The last coat I did even slightly thicker again. Um, so hopefully I've got enough coverage. I don't have quite enough paint left in the tub to do another coat on all the pieces. So I think I'm just gonna leave it at what I've done so far. Um, and hopefully that'll be enough to protect it from underneath. So the next task now is to um, glue and screw all the pieces back permanently into the frame on the floor. Um, but before I can do that, there's a couple of little things I have to uh, fix because one of the complications of doing the floor thicker than the original floor um, is that in a couple of spots in the floor there are some little hatch hatches um, and the hatch covers are, and the seals underneath them are designed to fit a 12 mil thick floor um, and because I'm doing 18 mil thick if I was to just put the hatches over the top of that they wouldn't press down as well on the seal um, so you would just wouldn't get a good seal underneath them at all so um, so one of them is the fuel sender unit at the back of the bus above the fuel tank that's just that little uh, small hatch and then there's a bigger one where the batch the starter batteries are um, up near the front so my plan for fixing that is to um, actually use a router to um, notch a bit of the thickness off around the edge of where those hatches are going to be. So I'll take 6 mil off, which will hopefully bring the edge back down to 12 mil thickness. And so when the hatch cover sits on top, it'll be sitting on top of the um, the 12 mil piece of the ply and should hopefully get a good seal. Don't know if this is gonna work. My dad actually has a router, um, but this particular one he's not actually used before and I've never used a router before, so I have no idea how to use one. So I've been on YouTube uh, to learn how to use a router. Hopefully uh, this will work because if it doesn't, um, I'm either gonna have to cut whole new pieces of ply or work out, maybe fashion my own hatch cover. Anyway, I'll give this a crack first and see if it works. So this is the little, um, I think it's an edge router that I've got to use. Um, and all I did was I um, just manually set the depth of the bit here just by um, measuring uh, six mil here. Um, and yeah, so I did a practice one. I actually cut another shape similar to the fuel sender hole um, with the jigsaw and then use this to go around. So you can see what I mean. Like it's, this is the, I've actually just used a scrap piece of 12 mil ply, but it'll work the same on the 18 mil. Um, so you can see that it just notches a little bit out of the edge. So hopefully the hatch will be able to sit down uh, in that and get a good seal. Anyway, that's the plan. Um, I'm going to give it a crack on the real piece and hopefully don't mess it up. So 
So this is what I mean. This is the piece, this is the fuel sender hatch here and the lid that's got to go, oh, I think it goes that way, um, on top gets screwed down into that. Oh, hang on. Other way. <laughs> um, yeah. So this one doesn't actually have the rubber gasket underneath anymore because it was so badly deteriorated when I pulled up the ply floor most of that rubber sort of came off with it so I might just get some a new piece of rubber to sit on top of that so that when this gets screwed down onto it it presses that and creates a seal and hopefully when the rubber is in too it might help this to sit up a little bit higher um, because the next challenge I'm going to have is what to do when I come to lay the vinyl um, over the top of this you want that to be sitting um, a little bit more flush. Hopefully it will once I put the rubber back underneath it. Um, if not, well, that'll be the next challenge. Well, so much for that plan. Um, it worked okay on the fuel sender hatch up the other end because it's um, the hatch lid itself was pretty much the exact same size as the hole and it just worked out. Um, but it's not going to work at all here. Um, obviously, now I cut when I cut this hole out, I did it to the exact same shape as the template, so the original floor. Um, but I've just realized when you put the hatch over, they obviously did not um, this hole that they had was just to accommodate the seal and it's not actually the exact same shape as the hatch so I was hoping that the hatch would just sit nicely on this um, etched out level um, but it actually doesn't it's it's still like if I was going to going to do it that way I would have to cut like notch quite a bit more out of the edge um, and there's a couple of problems with that firstly I don't think I can do that with the particular router, well certainly not the, the bit that I was using um, because that's as far in as it goes. I don't know how to take like an, an extra width off this without um, cutting this off. And also, um, if you look up here where the edge of this ply is, is already very close. If I lift this up see to the edge of the frame and if I was to take this back any further then it wouldn't actually be uh, it'd be it wouldn't be sitting on the frame in that section um so I need to come up with some other plan for this blasted battery hatch okay so yesterday was a bit frustrating I was hoping to get at least half the floor screwed down yesterday but then I realized um, the problems that I was going to have refitting the battery hatch cover so that put a bit of a spanner in the works and I had to spend some time thinking about how I was going to fix that um, so I think I've come up with a plan which hopefully will work and not look too uh, untidy from the inside so I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing now so what I'm going to do is most of this piece here I will keep as the 18 mil thickness and I'll just cut it so that it joins on this um, beam here and then this little piece here under the hatch and all the way up to that join I'll do in 12 mil um, and that way the hatch should just sit and lock nicely into that like it did with the original floor. Um, what it will mean is that this little rectangle of floor will be a little bit lower than the rest of the floor um, so essentially the hatch will be kind of indented into the floor which will look fine um, and then with this little bit here what I can do is actually pack that with a little bit of 6 mil um, because I'm going to be putting vinyl over the top so I can come back later on and just pack that out a little bit so that this section up here will end up being the same height as the main floor and it'll just be the square around the hatch that's kind of indented and I can put some little trim on that so I don't think that will look too bad and as I said this is actually going to be under a table and there'll be a little um, wall kind of thing here so you're not really going to be able to see it unless you sort of look under the table and I mean who cares 
Okay, so that was a bit fiddly to cut that out again from a sheet of the 12 mil, but um, so you can see this is the original 18 mil piece I had in and I've just chopped this bit off the end of it. Um, and I've cut this section out of 12 mil ply um, and it just fits nicely in there around the seal. So now if I put the battery hatch in position, So that's actually where the battery hatch will sit and you can see now it's sitting flush with the floor and it's got a good seal underneath. So you can see what I mean about this section now being just a little bit lower than the main floor. Um, but try and imagine this covered in vinyl too so it'll look a little bit neater. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is just getting a little 6mm piece um, to fit in there so this section here will actually end up being the same height as that and covered in vinyl and then I can just get a little piece of aluminium trim tile trim or something to trim that out so I think it'll look okay when it's all finished um, but at least now the hatch fits beautifully and seals up nicely so oh, so now I've just got to paint the trim paint this piece and the edges that I've cut off this one and then we'll finally be ready to start screwing it all in so the way I installed the ply was basically just to clean all the dust and dirt off the frame and then I applied Sika adhesive. I actually used um, Sika 221 which I've used a lot before and it's pretty good. Um, so I put a generous amount of the Sika onto the frame and then stuck the boards down on top of that. And then once they were glued in position, I was happy with where they were sitting, uh, I then screwed them down. So I used a hammer and a nail first just to mark where I wanted the screws to go. Um, and it also helped create a little indent to get the screw started. Um, and then I screwed them in. Now some of them went in really easily, some of them didn't. I had to pre-drill um, a few of them because it was quite hard getting the screw through some sections of the metal frame. I also had to consult my map that I'd drawn of the floor frame a few times just to make sure I was actually putting the screws into the beams underneath the floor because obviously once the floor's down it's a bit hard to see where the frame is underneath. Well, the floor is in. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to have this job finished. Um, this was actually way harder than it was putting the floor in in my big bus. Because um, with the big bus, it was the, the frame that the floor screwed into was well above all the um, mechanics and hoses and things underneath the floor. So, and it was just a matter of, you know, cutting straight rectangular pieces and screwing them in. This floor had so many different sized pieces and curves and holes and things I had to cut out. You know, it was a bit like trying to fit a jigsaw puzzle. Um, and then with this bus also you have to be really careful where you're putting the screws because there are actually a lot of cables and wires um, and there's like a fuel tank directly below the floor um, so you have to be really careful. I was under the bus back and forth quite a lot just checking to make sure I wasn't going to puncture anything important. Um, and again, this is where keeping the original floor for templates came in handy because I was able to see where Toyota had put the screw so I was able to sort of stick fairly close to um, where they had the original screws um, Anyway, it's all screwed down. Hopefully I didn't hit anything important underneath um, It feels really solid to walk on a lot a lot stronger than the original floor did that's for sure Especially on this side where there's quite big gaps in the framework um, When I had the original 12 mil ply floor still in here You can actually feel it flexing a little bit when you're still in those areas with this um, 18 mil thick stuff. There's just no flexing at all. It feels super sturdy So even though you know, I ran into quite a few complications because I was doing the extra thickness in the floor um, I'm glad I did because you know now I feel like I've got a really strong solid floor that I'm going to be able to screw cabinets and things into without any issues at all. <laughs> that was a big week. Uh, but anyway the floor is done and so that's a big job ticked off and now I need to start thinking about what to do next. It's probably going to be uh, the windows or maybe the roof. I'm just going to enjoy a couple of days off now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm really pleased, I'm really pleased that it worked out in the end.